Hey guys, how's it going? Uh, a couple things to show off this week. Um, some of the things that I am working on aren't ready to show yet. Uh, they're actually still pretty broken in state. Um, but I do uh, want to show off the toggle options that I have so far um, that allow you to not only toggle buttons as you would expect, but toggle uh, sticks, axes. Uh, so. I have a Xbox One plug uh, controller plugged in, and I'm routing that to a 360 here. So we're going to go up and pull up the properties on this. Um, and I also have a couple mappings already done. Um, they're all still going to the same axis, but uh, they're all adding a toggle in there. So, uh, but one's going to button one, etc. Uh, so. What I'm going to do here, I'll show off the button, of course, first. Uh, a, which is uh, corresponds to button one here. Uh, so, just turning that, hitting that every time you hit it, it'll either turn it on or turn it off. So that's as you would expect. Uh, but the cool thing is uh, also having the ability to um, toggle an axis. Uh, so what'll happen here is um, it'll act normally until I go uh, beyond a certain extent and then if I go like up to here say and I release it back to the center it stays uh, it'll stay all the way up uh, so actually I can't do a picture in picture here um, so you know I take my finger off of it and the axis still shows up uh, in the top there and that's useful like if you have open world games, MMOs, stuff like that uh, that don't have a uh, walk toggle or a run toggle where you can just, you know, not have to hold a button to walk. Um, this will, you know, be able to do that for you. Um, and what you do to release it is you just push the stick up again and then it's free again. You can release it. So, uh, yeah, you push it up to the edge, release the stick, it'll lock do it again it'll unlock uh, and it works for left and right too um, also access does the same thing Z axis there uh, if I only want to do it part way I can lock it there as well uh, push it in once again to release uh, so that's about it for that um, other thing I've been working on is the website the UI stuff on that um, there are, uh, well, I mean, there was a lot of issues with the old website where people couldn't find what version of the application to use, all that stuff. So now it's, you know, big front and center um, for everybody to see one of the first things on the web page. So, uh, and I'm going to start updating the alpha on this site uh, pre, uh, probably within the next release or so. It, this is going to be the only site that has the alpha now. Um, I'm going to start pushing it here. And everything on the old site is going to redirect to here, so uh, that way we can start making sure that everything is working smooth uh, using the new site by, you know, sending everybody to it. Um, so that's about it uh, as far as stuff to show. Um, things that I have to talk about. Uh, Benjamin is working on a new release of um, HID Guardian, which I've already told people about, and he's also working on a new release of Fireshock. So we have our DualShock 3 and uh, PlayStation Nav controllers are going to be coming back. Um, the driver looks like it's already working pretty good. Uh, there's a couple things he wants to tweak before I can implement it because he says a few of the things that um, that I would be hooking are going to change uh, in the next version he's working on. So uh, I'm holding off on that, seeing what he has going on. Um, HID Guardian, the new version of that, when that comes out, should make uh, working with Input Mapper and any other, any other application actually um, a lot easier because it's not using PIDs anymore or process IDs. It's actually using just the executable name. Um, so we won't need a helper service or anything like that. Uh, you just set it up, the HID Guardian to always allow Input Mapper, and it'll work. Um, we'll probably still make an installer to make it easy for people. Uh, people that aren't comfortable using the uh, the command line tools to install it. Uh, so 
uh, yeah, that's about that's what's going on. Um, I got a couple other projects I'm working on this week, so it might be a slow week. Uh, we'll see how much time I have to throw into this. Um, my goal, uh, of course, other than continuing to you know keep an eye on what Benjamin has going on as far as those two things, uh, my goal is to um, get the mapping really squared away. Um, it's feeling pretty good so far. The uh, the features that I have in there are already in. Uh, what I need to do now is to implement the axes tuning for uh, doing access to axis mapping and that might be a little complicated. Um, I have I do have a lot of stuff already done for that in previous versions of Input Mapper that I can just copy and paste and bring over but I do want to add a lot of stuff to it. Um, I spoke before about making multiple um, formulas uh, for uh, curves and all that stuff. I want to do um, like power gain, power loss, uh, quadratic. Um, I forgot the. So there's a couple other formulas I want to use that and allow people to switch between them for different, you know, curve profiles. Uh, so all that stuff is stuff that I want to work on this week and get that out uh, because I think that's some pretty cool stuff. Um, also, uh, things that I am currently actively working on is the virtual keyboard. Uh, mapping a device to a keyboard and or mouse. Um, that's an important one because that's what a lot of people always, you know, came to Input Mapper for, is that ability. Uh, so and until I until I get that back in, um, it's Input Mapper isn't very useful to a lot of people. So uh, I want to hurry up and do that so people can start using Input Mapper full time and actually do a lot of the debugging for me. So um, that's about it, guys. Uh, have a good one.